Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Gazprom stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Gazprom is a Russian energy company headquartered in St. Petersburg, Russia. It's the largest publicly listed natural gas company in the world and largest company in Russia. It's vertically integrated and active in every area of the gas industry. This includes exploration and production, refining, transportation, distribution, marketing, and power generation. The company produces 12% of the global output of natural gas, producing half a trillion cubic meters of natural gas and 16 million tons of gas condensate. The company exports gas through pipelines that the company builds and owns across Russia and abroad. Through its subsidiary, Gazprom Neft, it produces 41 million tons of oil with reserves of 2 billion tons. The company also has subsidiaries in industrial sectors including finance, media, aviation, and majority stakes in other companies. 38% of the company is owned by the Russian government. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 72 billion market cap. They're trading at $6 a share and they have 11.8 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and they have a lot of net income. It was 9 billion in 2017, 19 billion in 2018, and 16 billion in 2019. Revenue is a sales for the company and they have a ton of revenue over $100 billion in 2018 and $100 billion in 2019. This is the company's income statement and all the numbers are in rubles. I converted their numbers to US dollars in my Excel spreadsheet. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Examples are cost of labor and cost of materials. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. Then below that is operating expenses. Examples are depreciation and marketing. Then below that is operating income. So you can see the company has a lot of operating income each year. Then below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then pre-tax income, then taxes. This company generates lots of net income every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And the reason they have negative free cash flow each year is because they're investing so much in their business through capex. When a company invests a lot in capex, the idea is their free cash flows in the future will be greater. The company does issue debt every year to fund their business. They also issued capital stock in 2019. When a company issues capital stock, it increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. Let's look at the capital structure. 186 billion of equity, 67 billion of debt. There are 73% equity, 27% debt and their WAC is 16% and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value which is all cash flows past year four that's 91 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 61 billion dollars. We divide that by 11.8 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 519. They're trading at 607, so they're trading at a 17% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street values the company at 687, so they're saying the stock is undervalued. They're saying it's a buy. This is the stock price the last five years. 
It looks like it peaked at about $8. Then it dropped a lot, probably back in March when the market crashed. It is trading at a big discount relative to its pre-March highs. This company pays an annual dividend and their dividend payment is 7.2%. That's a pretty big dividend. And they pay out 33% of their net income. They have a really low beta, 0.36, so the stock moves one third of the market. The stock has gone down 16% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 17%. The 52 week low was $4, the high was $7. And the stock is trading above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About half a million to 1 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 12 billion shares outstanding, about half are on float. Only 4% are held by institutions. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you would be down to $6,500 today. The Russian government is the biggest shareholder at 38%. The next shareholder owns 11%, then Vanguard, then BlackRock, then Capital Research. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 9, the median is 14, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have a really good PE at 4.6, so investors are paying $4.60 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.7, another great ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 0.4, also a good ratio. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can cover their interest payments 18 times. ROE is net income over equity. It rounds to 0%. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities 1.4 times. The company does seem to be well capitalized. They had negative 865 million of free cash flow, nearly 12 billion of working capital, and a $5.2 billion dividend payment. So they have almost $6 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies I've done videos of eight companies in the same industry as Gazprom. This company is doing better in every ratio when you compare it against the average. Their price multiples are really good. They have a good current ratio. They do have a 0% ROE, but the average in the industry is negative. Since most companies have negative net income, they're a little lower in debt. They're higher than average in market cap, and they pay a high dividend, 7.2%. So to summarize, this is such a big and important company that it's not going anywhere. This is the type of stock you should hold long term. I rank their free cash flow as 1 out of 10 because they're investing so much into their business, it's negative every year. I rank their revenue 6 out of 10 because it did go down in 2019. And I rank their ratios 10 out of 10. Their ratios are amazing. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.